Um, it's pretty wild that uh, it's almost March. It's happening. It's almost March, and six months ago, after a season of discernment, um, you and uh, Emily and your family um, announced, we announced to the church that you all were sensing a conclusion to your chapter, your 10 years at REACH. Yeah. And um, it's uh, been such a beautiful, healthy process, unrushed process that we've been walking out over these past couple months. I know I have personally learned so much from both you and Emily in how you have walked into a season of discernment with wisdom and so much faith, stepping into that space, not even knowing back in September fully what the Lord would be inviting you into in this next season. Um, I've learned so much from you and how you've done that and, and how you've specifically done that. Um, uh, so oftentimes I think we can make decisions in isolation but you all have run to Jesus and you have run to, to community. Yeah. And I uh, have learned so much from, from that exemplary just example for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and as well, I've, uh, I will say in the past couple weeks, the, the uh, emotions of this have start, started to get real, real for me. Um, how are you feeling? How are you doing right oh, now gosh. in this moment? <laughs> that is a loaded question. Um, it has been brutal, if I'm honest. Uh, on the emotional level, it has been brutal. On, on the conviction level, we're unable to doubt what God's doing here. But um, I'm super sad. Like that's uh, the, the last couple of days have been uh, in a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I, I I've been saying I, these next ten days, whatever, uh, already feel kind of like a, a slow motion car crash. <laughs> Just that's, I know that's vivid, but like that's what it feels like inside. And so on the, on the emotional level, that's where we're at. And so, you know, pray for Emily and I, especially, and the kids too, as we just grieve and mourn and all of that. And, you know, next Sunday, you know, being our, our kind of like our sending, um, just have a bunch of grace. Like, pray I can speak at all out loud. That would be great. Um, so that's the emotional side, and it's real. And uh, I think that when we announced back six months ago what was going on, I've had the, the realization that I'm, I'm proud of how we've walked this out as a community and as an elder, like eldership table and as a leadership team. Uh, but the messaging then was here's honesty and here's health and here's why it's gonna be okay. And what I think it may not have left enough room for was just like, this is sad. <laughs> um, and so here I am declaring that and just trying to kind of give all of us permission to feel whatever we want to feel for the, you know, for those, especially those who've been around, around for a long time. If you're newer and this is week one, I'm not worried about you. I think you're going to be all right um, with, with, with my transition. But when I look at, so that's the emotional state, but when I look at the state of this church, more, more confidence in the leadership and the state of our church now than, than ever before. That is not hyperbole. That is not wishful thinking. I really believe that. I see an expanded elder team and like the heart and the vision of a built out table of people from different backgrounds and different passions. We're moving towards that and made incredible progress there. This empowered pastoral team, these people who, t- who carry the title pastor are some incredible men and women leading the day to day. Just the experience of our staff as a whole right now. Like there are some folks who have been in these roles for a long time and folks who are newer to the squad that bring education and experience and in perspective we haven't had in the past. The collaborative teaching team is incredibly rare. Their church is reaching out to us. Like, how do you guys do that? What Dan Chalapali has helped stand up, like this collaborative table of multiple voices. How do you do that? And then I think of like just care and shepherding, counseling center, care groups, all these things that over the last couple of years, we've said, we can't do everything in a pandemic. We can't do everything in a season of transition. What can we do? And the things that have happened have, have been incredible. So, um, that's, that's where we're at right now. I just, I, I feel those things. What I would want to put a, a quick like pinpoint on is we just try to bring clarity as much as possible moving forward is I would think you'd be tempted to, th- for, to think that the main question is, well, who's the next person that's going to carry Brian's title or, or who's going to have this title? Or th- I think what's a more helpful question is what are the gaps that Brian's transition creates? That's the real question, as we be a family who leads in plurality and, and all of that. And the two specific gaps are, are a vision gap in terms of like, who is the person who's guiding per sons to say, this is who Reach is, this is how Reach works, this is who we're trying to be, this is where we're going, all of that. That vision gap is, is somewhat real. And then it's a preaching gap, right? So those are the, the two gaps. And I think giving... Um, giving clarity to those things. And so Scott Pollock is our interim preaching pastor. 
and is going to be taking 50% of those, of those reps um, for all of 2023, which is an incredible gift. He's been amazing. Uh, so that gap is already mostly filled. I've typically have taken three out of four-ish. And so you've got Scott taking two out of four in a given month. You've got Dan Chalapali coming back to the stage today, which is a huge, huge blessing. And like, yeah, yeah, um, incredible emerging voice. And so just between the two of them, mathematically, you've already covered the math of my gap. But wisdom-wise and experience-wise and perspective-wise between those two, I would go to that church, just for the record. Like, holy smokes, what an incredible gift. Yeah. So that's that. And, and Scott has already been such a blessing. And I think it's, it's poetic that the man who taught you how to preach back in the day is now the man that God would have provided for this church family through, through this year, through 2023, um, to bless and serve our church in that way, to, to invest and develop our, our team further. Um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's only the, the creativity and goodness of God in that, that he would be able to provide that. And, yeah. and it is something as well we do. Um, one of the things we're excited about this, this next year is to, um, is really for the Lord to lead us in a process of discovering um, who will be our primary kind of teaching voice um, in in 2024 and, and beyond. Um, that's a process. We'll be sharing more about the details of that in, in the future, um, but that is something we're, we're eagerly looking forward to, knowing that he's going to provide who we need in that space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and for this entire calendar year to be in the space that Reach is going to be in is a gift. I keep, we don't have time for this, but it's just too funny. Uh, I, have hist- I have kind of been Russell Wilson. Scott is Geno Smith, y'all. So Russell's not nearly as good as you thought he was, okay? And Gino's the pro bowler. Like, that's how this is going to work, okay? Um, and so and you, you put the rest of... I could stretch that analogy way too far. Um, but that is 100% how this is going to go. So that, that speaks to the preaching gap. The other one is the vision gap. Um, and I think what's amazing, what folks probably don't know, is that it has been such a collaborative process already. And, you know, Rob, you and I have gotten to, to work together now for three-plus years uh, and that has been through a crazy season and hard transitions and pandemics and all kinds of things. And uh, what you guys need to know is that in many ways, Rob has been the organizational leadership of Reach already in spectacular fashion. Um, there, are, there are many things, many things in a typical church uh, that are typically lead pastor things that Rob has been doing when it comes to leading the staff, when it comes to kind of pointing the way, when it comes to making things are stable, getting roots deep, all of those kind of things. It has been such a joy to work alongside him in that way. His gifting in that space has been so obvious that before I even took a sabbatical last summer, the conversation was already kind of swirling. What would it look like for me to change my title to just teaching pastor? because Rob was leading so strong in all these other spaces that it would have been a joy to walk that out. Um, And that's what makes the search for a teaching pastor now make so much sense because of how strong Rob has been in this space. And Rob, what this moment provides me an opportunity to do is, is just formally bless you and like formally empower you in front of this family and say, I have all the confidence for as long as this season will be where, where you're getting to kind of lead the way. Uh, and when it comes to vision on behalf of the staff with the support of the elders, but like you getting to kind of stand and be on this stage frequently saying, hey, church, here's where we're at and here's where we're going and here's what we're trying to do. There is no one on the planet I would trust more to do that. And just, I wanted to give you something as a symbol of that. Um, In World War II, there were heroes all over the place. Um, And the ones that we tend to think about are the infantry, paratroopers, D-Day, all of that. Uh, But there was this kind of another group that was handling a ton of things that were no less soldiers, that were no less trained, no less equipped, no less battle tested. And it was the Army Corps of Engineers. And they would literally be going into war zones. And sometimes the work was blaze the trail. And sometimes the work was fortify the city. And sometimes the work was strategize this and find a way into into the possibility of success where it isn't otherwise. Or, you know, all of that ended up being on the engineers. And standard issue for those Corps of Engineers in the 40s was uh, a compass. And I told you in a prayer time not so many months ago that I felt like God gave me a picture of you uh, with a sword in one hand and a compass on the other. And uh, that's the kind of leader that I want to follow and to, and, to, and to lead this church into the future. And I was able to track down um, one of those standard issue World War II compasses. Um, and that is for you, my friend. 
Um, and uh, what a gift. So may there be no mystery uh, who you're called to be in this season. Um, and you are a spirit filled man um, with an inner compass unlike anyone I've met. And so, um, yeah, I just please, please know that you have my full blessing, my full support in this space. And I have a hunch that this church is behind you as well. So, yeah. You, you know me all too well that my love language is World War II anecdotes. So thank you. Thank you for that. And this is what, a, what an amazing, um, yeah, what an amazing gift, Brian. Um, one of the, the hallmarks of your leadership for, for me and for so many in this community has been the ability to oftentimes see what God has put in us long before we recognize that in ourselves. And you have done that for me, brother, when I came on staff three years ago, not knowing what this journey was gonna look like at all, and yet you patiently, graciously um, drawing out what I believe God had, 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 had in my heart all along, um, and a passion for, and a love for this church community. Um, thank you, thank you for the gift of your leadership in that way. And I've, I've taken such, um, such assurance in um, the words of Paul, and um, we're actually gonna preach on this in a couple weeks, it's out of 1 Corinthians chapter three. Um, and I'm going to paraphrase it as, as a blessing for you, and I just think it encapsulates so well what God is doing right now. I mean, it says that according to the grace given to you, Brian, you as a wise master builder have laid a foundation that others will now build upon. And yet it is a foundation that, is, um, that, that no other foundation will be set upon that other than Jesus Christ. And we commend you, brother, for the foundation that you have set for this church over the last decade that is built surely on Jesus. And it's our commitment that we will continue the, uh, to, to, to build upon that foundation. And the beautiful thing is that, that, that unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers build in vain. That at the end of the day, that is the Lord who brings life. It's him who brings beauty to our plans. It is him who brings fruitfulness and sustainability to this community and, and bringing that forward. And so it is with much, um, with much uh, humility and great, great expectation that I am, I am eager to, uh, to help lead this church in joining what God is already doing in this community. And I believe what he's doing in the Seattle area and more broadly what he's even doing in America right now, yep. reawakening his people to the reality of who he is. Yep. And we're getting to experience that already in this church. And yep. it's um, in, in, in so many ways because of the foundation that you and Emily and your family have so patiently, wisely laid over the last decade. Yep. And so thank you for that, brother. Man, well said, brother. Well said.